Hey everyone. In our last lecture, we discussed how to close read. Today, we discuss the why. Why do we close read? What's the point? We close read in order to develop an interpretation of a text. And that's where we start to get into murky waters. One of the main issues that comes up when we discuss interpreting texts is the issue of the tension between the author's intention and the reader's perception. A lot of people seem to think that what the authors meant to say is somehow truer and more valid than what a reader might take from it. It's easy to understand this impulse because all of us have at one point or another said something and had it been interpreted a different way. We said one thing, the person we spoke to thought we meant another. In turn, we all want to understand what people mean. We want to live in a world where everyone perfectly understands what everyone else meant to say. But, of course, language doesn't work like that. Language is tricky and arbitrary. Every one of us has personal experiences, beliefs, cultural, historical, social backgrounds that affect the way that we understand and interpret word choice, phrases, tones of voice. This is true for both the speaker or the author and the reader or the listener. This tension is known in literary theory as the tension between authorial intent and reader response. Here's an example to explain what I'm talking about. Sarah and Taylor like each other a lot and they're going out on a first date. Taylor knows that red roses symbolize romance and wants to indicate their romantic interest in Sarah and so decides to bring Sarah a dozen red roses. However, when Sarah sees the roses, she becomes sad. In Sarah's culture, only friends give each other roses. Taylor is surprised. They thought Sarah would be happy. Sarah is surprised. She thought Taylor liked her. In this situation, who's right about the roses? Taylor meant well, but Sarah's still sad. Should Sarah just suck it up because Taylor's intention was good? Or should Taylor feel bad because Sarah received the gift differently than expected? Now imagine that Taylor just sends Sarah the roses, without a note, expecting Sarah to understand what Taylor meant. Now who's right about the roses? Reading literature is sort of like receiving a bouquet of flowers from an author, only instead of flowers, we get words on a page. Of course, whenever an author writes something down, they mean to say something, but there's no guarantee to them that we'll understand exactly what they mean to say. Throughout history, literary scholars have argued about what matters more, the author's intention or the reader's response. Some camps go so far as to say that only the author determines the true meaning of a text. Authorial intent is all that matters, and we should read texts in order to figure out what the author meant to say. Other camps swing in the opposite direction. Once the author puts words on paper, meaning is out of their hands, and the only opinion or meaning that matters is how the reader responds. As you might guess, most literary scholars fall somewhere in between. An author's intention is important, they say. It matters, but it's not the only meaning. How a reader responds to a text is as important, and a reader can respond to a text in very different ways than an author intended. Both meanings are correct. Texts have many meanings and can mean many multiple things, often at the same time. Now, I can hear you getting frustrated. That's ridiculous. Surely a text can't mean anything. Then someone could say that Little Red Riding Hood was about aliens visiting medieval times and we'd have to take them seriously because that's their valid response? Not quite. That is a ridiculous notion. You should think of interpretation as an argument. You're allowed to think whatever you want to think, but to have a convincing and strong argument, you need to have evidence to back your claim up. And that's where close reading comes back to save the day. The details we discover and examine in close reading are the evidence in support of our argument. We decide which interpretations of a text are strongest and most interesting based on how convincingly a reader explains and presents the evidence of their argument. Our interpretation of a text is built from aspects of close reading we discussed before. Word choice, tone, verbal context, social context, the use of literary devices. And our job as close readers is to be able to explain why those devices and techniques lead us to our interpretations. In this way, even if someone ultimately disagrees with your interpretation of the text, they will be able to understand how and why you came to your interpretation. In short, close reading and interpretation are an inseparable team. We read closely in order to develop an interpretation of a text. 
and the interpretations of a text are supported by the details of the close reading. Now we move to a close relative of interpretation, literary theory. Because texts are capable of producing so many different meanings, approaching a text can feel a little bit like being thrown out into the ocean on a small boat without a paddle. Well, literary theory is your paddle. On the Internet Encyclopedia of Philosophy, a peer-reviewed academic resource, Professor Vince Bruton succinctly defines literary theory as, quote, a description of the underlying principles, one might say the tools, by which we attempt to understand literature, end quote. Literary theory describes, quote, the theories that reveal what literature can mean. Literary theories understand literature in terms of different basic understandings of how the world works. Marxist literary theory, for example, examines the effects of economic shifts on culture and the representation of class conflict as it appears in literature. Structuralism examines literature in terms of literary form and structure rather than any one text's particular content. New historicism holds the best way to understand literature is to understand how a particular text is embedded in a particular historical context. Gender studies and feminist theory examine how texts respond to and embody different notions of gender and sexual identity, and so on and so on. No single theory has all the answers. Some theories are better at explaining certain kinds of texts than others, but mostly you'll find people using multiple tools from multiple theories to approach texts. In this course, we're going to focus on two main schools of theory, postmodernism and feminist and gender studies. Your reading for this week, Postmodernism and Science Fiction, will introduce you to three main postmodern thinkers, Frederick Jameson, François Lyotard, and Jean Baudrillard. As we move through Philip K. Dick's novel, Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep, we'll examine each one of them in closer detail. It's tricky stuff, but I think you can do it. See you next time.